Nearly four and a half years ago, I came to the chamber. We jump-started the Military Affairs Committee, and we could not have done it without General McDonald and General Schrader. These two individuals have fought for their country, for the region, and for this local community in every way. Together, we celebrate today the honoring of them in the highest award that the chamber gives out, the Legacy Leader Award. Well, Darrell and I grew up three miles apart. We met uh, early on. We hunted together and fished together. and Fishing and flying and traveling and just doing all kinds of things that people do together. And we've remained friends for the past 70 years. You know, I grew up alone. I did not have a brother. And uh, he is my brother. Well, I started flying when I was about uh, 14 years old. And I was, I don't know, 12 years old, I suppose. In fact, it was Alec McDonald's uh, uncle had an airplane near our farm, and I had rode my bike or my pony back from Max one day, and, and he had just landed. And then when I started college in 1942, I took some lessons, but uh, they were uh, a little bit out of my price range, and I knew I loved the flying, and I just couldn't see myself becoming involved in it because I knew I didn't have the money to do it properly. And I just drove into his yard and said, hi, Mr. Plath, and he said, hi, Daryl, and, and I walked around the airplane and said, I've never had an airplane ride, and he said, Esther, wait for supper, I'll give Daryl a quick ride, <laughs> and, and that just, when I took that ride, I thought this is something I just have to do. We both joined the North Dakota Air National Guard. Daryl joined in 1947, I joined in 1948. Uh, when I was 17, about the, a group of us from Fargo Central, they were just starting the guard unit then and they were recruiting a lot of young people. Mac was in the unit here and uh, was activated for Korea. There's a great new book out that uh, talks about prairie boys at war that Mac is in. Mac came back here and uh, was farming, uh, farming next to Daryl. Daryl was doing his crop spraying. Uh, Daryl was on active duty, flying F-86s in Europe, came back here and then flew uh, here in the, in the Air Guard. He became uh, Chief of Staff for Air and I was the Air Commander. He took over the wing and, and it got to be probably the most famous guard wing in the whole United States. Record after record after record, just unbelievable. I'm Major General William S. Harrell, commander of the 24th NORAD region. The Fargo National Guard is one of the finest units in ADC, if not the finest. In all instances, when I've called on Colonel McDonald, he has responded with only asking how many, which way, and how far. Mac has been such a pioneer, not only in aviation, but in the military, and has really put North Dakota on the map. And when I hear things such as the best fighter unit, the best fighter unit on planet Earth, there's a lot of people that will say that and think it, but you have a trophy to prove. And of course built the Happy Hooligans into a organization being the very best there is, and winning the William Tell uh, in front of the regular Air Force people was uh, quite an event to see when they accepted the award. As you know, this competition was structured and conducted to highlight the capabilities of the best of the best teams. The Bong Trophy winner in the F4 category with 27,434 points is the 119th Fighter Interceptor Group, Fargo, North Dakota. Certainly being involved at the Airport Authority as I have been since 1991, got to interact with, with, with both of them a lot, uh, especially, uh, you know, witnessing their passion for aviation and the need for the establishment of the Fargo Air Museum. First of all, we started the Fargo Air Show. We managed to make a few dollars and put some in the treasury. And we decided to do another air show a few years later. Made a little more money and as time went on, we had a pretty good sized treasury. And Darrell one day said, uh, maybe we ought to start an air museum. And of course, both of those two men had a tremendous role in making this air museum come together. Their aviation backgrounds and also their connections that uh, they had. They managed to persuade Chuck Yeager to come here for that first air show. They reminded uh, Chuck Yeager that he owed the hooligans a favor for uh, 
a ride they had given him across country when he had to get somewhere in a hurry. Chuck was probably getting about $50,000 for an appearance back in those days, but uh, they persuaded him to come to Fargo for an IOU chit. And because the Fargo Air Show is a charity, obviously that is given back a lot to the community as well. And it was someone like Daryl Schrader that really took that upon himself to make certain that others would benefit uh, from his experience and expertise in aviation to make sure that all generations from now and here to come would not only benefit from seeing those machines flying during an air show or on display at a Fargo Air Museum. And, and that certainly is going to live on for many, many generations to come. I've been involved with them with the Fargo Air Museum and it has been a pleasure to get to know both of them. They are very intelligent, non-self-serving, and principal gentlemen. They're of the old school. Mac uh, has served on the airport authority collectively for 26 years. Started back in September of 1976. Many don't know that when Darrell was on the board at Maricare, which is now Sanford, he's the one who initiated the first air medical helicopter flight in our area. And look what that has done now to, to serve our region. So Darrell was instrumental in setting up what is known now as Life Flight. Being with Mac and Corky, obviously, you know that there's a lot of stories and stuff, a lot of pilot stories. And it's just phenomenal for me to sit back and listen to all of the stories. I have no clue if any of them are true. They called all the wives into the base theater and told them that they should get a can of gas, five gallon can of gas, a box of groceries and put them in the trunk. And if anything happened, just head east, head west, I'm sorry, head west to the coast. And when I came home from that temporary duty assignment a day or two later, Jean was pretty wide-eyed and she was pretty serious. Uh, she didn't realize that that could happen like that. Daryl is a master storyteller and some of his exploits over in Europe are just fascinating. Uh, there's even rumor of him taking warm beer up to high altitude to cool it down for his ground crew, make his ground crew happy. So uh, the stories are endless from Daryl and Mac. It was making a lot of noise and uh, Thornton Becklin was in the right seat and all of a sudden the noise quit. Just quit. And Brecklin said, the engine fell off. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, the engine fell off. And I, I was sitting in my, my seat, and I got up and looked out the window, and I said, the engine fell off. He said, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We were both uh, special assistants to Commander-in-Chief of North American Air Defense. First Darrell, and then I followed him. After Nora, it, uh, went on to be the Air National Guard representative to uh, European Air Command. He was well respected. Just a week ago somebody said, uh, oh you're from Fargo, yes. Do you know Daryl Schrader? And that has happened so many times. Uh, he's a guy that everybody knows and loves uh, all over the country. He's uh, kind of a legend in aviation. Just a real hero to me, both of these men are. So that is a real uh, exception that uh, you have two fellows that close, that successful, have accomplished uh, that much and made that much of a contribution to the community. It's hard to separate the two, really, in a lot of ways. Both of them have been very instrumental since they've retired from the military in the fargo Morad Air National Guard Support Group, of which um, I've been involved with them since uh, it started prior to the last BRAC round that we had. And uh, to see their passion uh, for making certain that the happy hooligans are taken care of in this community. Many of us are very concerned about what's happening to the Air Guard, and I think that uh, we'll take that into consideration, and I think the happy hooligans, I, th I personally would like to make them happy. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Both uh, General Schrader and General Mack have been great backbones to the, uh, not only to the retiree community, but the entire Guard right up until today. You know, I, I just can't thank them enough for all that they do uh, to continue to be engaged in our community and really make a difference. Well, Mac and Darrell both deserve our uh, deepest gratitude, congratulations, and admiration for winning this award. I don't know what else to say except that I'm just so lucky to know them. But I don't want to forget that they have a very fine accompaniment in their lovely, lovely brides. Well, I met Alex McDonald when he was a first lieutenant with the North Dakota Air National Guard and an active duty um, radar observer, air advisor, convinced him he should come along with him on a blind date. We're 57 years later. <laughs> 
Daryl and I met in college, and I had to wait for him to get through so we could get married. And we got married and, uh, um, on a Friday night, and we checked into Georgia at noon. And we didn't have any place to stay. But we did. Uh, he came back, and he said, oh, I got a house. And it was a farmhouse right on the road going out to the base. Good evening, General McDonald, General Schrader. Congratulations on being recipients of the Legacy Award. I apologize that I can't join you this evening. This evening, we're gathering with the families of the fallen at the Global War on Terrorism Memorial here in Bismarck. General McDonald, thank you for everything you've done over the years for the North Dakota National Guard, both Air and Army. It was during your tenure as the Adjutant General that you made decisions that made the difference in the lives of our soldiers and our airmen and provided for opportunities even to this day. And it was also during your tenure as the Adjutant General that the North Dakota Veterans Memorial Cemetery was put into place. Since that initiation of the cemetery more than 25 years ago, we have had more than 4,000 interments. General Schrader, thank you for what you've done over the years in support of the North Dakota Air National Guard the 119th wing, the happy hooligans. It's because of you that you've made a difference in the lives of many of our airmen at the 119th wing and have allowed them to be successful in everything that we've asked of them. And to Joan and Jean, thank you for your support for Mac and for Daryl. Without the two of you, they couldn't have been as successful as they have been over the years. So again, congratulations, Mac. Congratulations, Daryl. Thank you for everything you've done for the Fargo-Moorhead area the North Dakota National Guard, and the great state of North Dakota.